curiosity. But always remember there is a proverb, the curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> well, I'm not a cat. I'm not going to. Well, cats have nine lives, apparently. Okay, so if you are not a cat, what are you? Are you what kind of jeev as per Jainism are you? With cat. For Jainism? Yes. What kind of jeev are you? Mm, that's a hard question. Right. I am a five cents to jeev. You are, a, which is a great answer. That's exactly what I was expecting. But what kind of, what special type of five Indriya Jeev are you? Panchendri Jeev. Let's try to remember the Hindi words. Hai na? Panchendri. Panchendri. You are right. What kind of Panchendri Jeev are you? Manushya Jeev. You are Manushya, of course. You all are Manushya. I am also Manushya. But there is a term which I am looking for. There is one additional thing on top of having the five senses. That you that is the key differentiator for Vikyat and for every one of us. You want to turn you said, on your camera, Vikyat and Samyak? My camera? You said something about like focusing on what's right and what's wrong, being able to differentiate. Yes, yes, you are getting there. I need the word. Samyak, you want to turn on your camera, please? Okay. Uh, Hold up. Any guesses? Uh, any guesses? What is the name? Uh, what is the name for that jeev or the being which has five senses plus the power or ability to distinguish between right and wrong? Human. Human is good, but human is a type yeah. of human is a type of that jeev, that category. I'm looking for the name for that category. Hmm. Ambita? Okay, I'll give the name. Let's not. Uh, remember the term I used earlier, Sanghi Panchendriya? Oh. Sanghi Panchendri is the name, right? So Vikyat is a Sanghi Panchendri, and so is Aviral, so is Samyak. So, so is us. And fortunately, I am also a Sanghi Panchendri. And like Malik said, yes, Vikyat said there are five senses, but five senses plus the cognition, the power of cognition to distinguish between right and wrong, to basically having learning abilities and then using those learning abilities to distinguish between what is right and wrong, morally and ethically. Yeah, nah? Malik yeah, is... Like, Malik, yeah, Malik what's your question? Asking, there are a few other organisms that can do that too, right? Like five yes. senses, right? Can you? Yes. Can you give me one name? Like dogs, cats, lions. Maybe Absolutely. Three. Absolutely. So human is a type of Sanghi Panchendri. Along with humans, there are these other animals, higher form animals, like elephants. Lion, tiger, cats, dogs, blah, 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 long list, right? So, but all of technically, them are... for some reason, there's in, in chim chimps, so for some reason, execute their kind like you, like, 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 like humans execute. Sorry, I, I'm not able to follow your point. With that. What Can I mean you... is that, like, like, for some reason, I read about, I watched some stuff about like random. Random stuff about animals and, and apparently chimps, chimps for some reason execute their kind for some reason for weird for a reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but yeah. then again, humans also in the brutalist ways executed people. So I and they're okay. primates. We're primates. Yeah, not much so we are not here. We are not here to learn random things. There is too much of information. Yeah, but right. It's just that, that the question focus. about that. Yes. So yes, they have power to rationalize. So the, if they have power to rationalize, they can do, uh, they can apply, they can execute violence as well, right? They can basically do Sankalpi Hinsa, they can actually do Arambi Hinsa, On, at the same time they can not do it, right? They can apply their discretion and stop themselves from doing it. That's what makes Sanghi Panchendri different from other animals. There have been situations in the past you would see 
the internet the, is full of such videos where there is this baby who fell in a cage of chimpanzee and the chimpanzee mother or the gorilla mother actually saved the baby like she pulled the baby out and gave it back to the mom i'm Now, not sure if some people can uh, i'm not sure if some people can you do that yes so that is what makes us lift. that's where the power of choice gets applied vikya right some people consciously do not want to do that or on the contrary they get too much carried away by their emotions and end up conducting sankalpi hinsa right so we heard, we learned about that earlier so having said that right that's a good point for us to get into to today's topic of kashay we will talk about this kashay and these kashays are our reactions to situations that lead us to good or bad karma coming our way that is the topic we are going to cover today but before we do that let's do namokar mantra i think we started we got too much carried away without starting without doing that right so let's first do the namokar mantra molik please turn on your camera as well namo arihantanam namo siddhanam namo ayariyanam namo uvajjhayanam namo lohe savvasahunam aiso panchanamo yaro savvapavapanashano mangalanam cha savvesim padhamam hovai mangalam jai jinendra kids so one thing let me leave you with um, let me start with the some thought exercise and the thought exercise is whenever you get an opportunity to recite namokar mantra never ever lose it because the kind of vibes that recitation of namokar mantra brings to you is immense it if it is not bringing any good karma on your side at least it helps in reducing the intensity of any bad karma coming to fruition and you know? and it purifies your thoughts so ever ever if you have an opportunity of reciting namokar mantra never lose it you know sometimes because of our procrastination our hesitations our things our distractions we kind of unintentionally or intentionally uh, basically devoid ourselves of those opportunities and that's something we should not be doing hai na pramad aa jata hai jisko hamare dharm mein bolte pramad the term for pramad in english is procrastination right sometimes inadvertently or advertently you would want to avoid doing something good that could bring something great to you hai na so just be mindful of that i will i want to bring this up to you because when i was reciting namokar mantra that's an opportunity to recite it together so much of great vibes it brings that's why when i recited you would have seen right i'm reciting it with full full energy and excitement because i know the power of namokar mantra and what it can bring to me make sense make sense okay cool so what should we do first first let me start with a exercise it's a slight deviation from our topic but a deviation worth having so let me see if i can share my screen okay let me know if you can see an article that i'm sharing can you see the article can you see the article yeah okay perfect so one thing when you send on whatsapp right i did exactly exactly so i hope you all have got the copy of it and if not that's okay we can do it together here uh, what i want you to do is there are like 16 to 17 paragraphs in it i want you to each one of you to turn on your mic other people's can go and mute and read uh, four paragraphs each okay right and we'll do it together so one guy comes in they speak i will call on the next guy they sp- they 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 Uh, uh speak loudly the four next and so on and so forth okay so we will start with let's see samyak how about we start with you okay so first four paragraphs okay and you can read it from the screen okay 
Encountering individuals whose presence fills our minds with positive energy is indeed rare, and their affection and blessings become invaluable treasures in our lives. For me, Saint Sharomani Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji Maharaj held a similar significance. Being in his presence felt like a transmission of profound spiritual energy. Observing saints like Acharya Ji made one realize that spirit, spirituality in India flows con continuously, much like an internal stream, bringing well-being to society. The meetings and conversations with them today keep replaying in my mind. Vis visiting Chandra Giri Jain Temple in Dongargarh. 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 How do you pronounce that? No, no, you said it right. Dongargarh. Chot Chhattisgarh. Last November, his blessing was an incredibly fortunate experience. At that time, I had no idea it would be my last meeting with Acharya Ji. That moment has become unforgettable for me. During our conversation, he spoke with me for quite a while. He cared for me with fatherly affection and blessed my efforts in serving the nation. He also expressed happiness for the recognition India was receiving on the global stage for its development. Okay, good. Good. Give me a second. Okay, uh, next let's see, uh, how about Malik, you go next. So we have completed up to stages of development, right? I, I actually lost track, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, why don't so you read? It starts, it starts with discussing its work? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Discussing his work, he was quite enthusiastic. His gentle gaze and divine smile was in, were inspiring. His blessings were truly joyous resonating with the awareness of their divine presence. His departure is akin to losing a remarkable guide who has consistently illuminated my path and the paths of countless others. A unique feature of India is that this sacred land has consistently given birth to great personalities who not only showed direction to individuals, but also made significant contributions to the betterment of society. In this grand tradition of saints and social reform, Saint Vidyasagar Ji Maharaj holds a prominent place. He has not only contributed to the present, but also paved a new path for the future. His entire life was filled with spiritual inspiration. Every chapter of his life is adorned with profound wisdom, boundless compassion, and unwavering dedication to the upliftment of humanity. Okay. Acharya pause. Vidya Malik, yeah? pause. Okay, Aviral, you can go next, please. Uh, Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji Maharaj has a trinity of right knowledge, right perception, and right conduct. What set his personality apart was that his profound perception was not only for self-realization, but equally empowering for societal awareness. His right knowledge was as much dedicated to spirituality as his contemplation was to worldly wisdom. Acharya's life replicated with compassion, service, Replete. and austerity. Replete with. As... Acharya's life replete with. Oh, yeah. Achar Acharya's life replete with compassion, service, austerity, served as an embodiment of the ideals of Lord Mahavira. His life became the paramount example of the fundamental principles of Jainism. Throughout his life, he preserved, three, uh, he preserved these principles through his actions and dedication. His life for every individual reflects the significance of life in Jainism. With unwavering commitment to truth, he imparted the lesson throughout his life that the purity of thoughts, wisdoms, uh, thoughts, words. words, and deeds hold immense importance. He always empathized the simplicity of life. Personalities like Acharya Ji inspire the world to connect with Jainism and the life of Lord Mahavira. Okay, next Vikyat, please go ahead. He 
He served as a significant source of inspiration, not only for the Jain community, but also for various other communities. His presence resonated with people from different sects, traditions, and fields, and he tirelessly worked towards fostering spiritual awakening, particularly among the youth. Particularly among the youth. The field of education remained close to his heart. His journey from childhood as with Yadav to becoming Acharya Vidhai Vidyasagar illustrates deep commitment. No, no, no. His journey from childhood as Vidyadhar. His Vidyadhar. name, his given name or childhood name was Vidyadhar. Okay. Uh, Read it again now. The field of education remained close to his heart. His journey from childhood <laughs> as Vidyadhar to becoming Acharya Achya Vithadar illustrates uh, his... Uh, Acharya who? Acharya who? Vidyada Sadar. Vidya Sagar. Vidya Sagar. The name of the protagonist whom we are talking about, you cannot say that name wrongly, right? You know about Acharya Vidya Sagar. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, to become Acharya, Acharya Vidya Sagar, Aage padho. illustrates his deep commitment to acquiring knowledge and using that knowledge to enlighten the entire society. He firmly believed that education forms the foundation of just, a just and enlightened society. He regarded knowledge as a paramount in empowering people and achieves life's, achieving life's goal. With a special emphasis on the importance of self-study, Swadhyaya, 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 and self-awareness as paths to true knowledge, he encouraged <laughs> continuous learning and ongoing efforts towards spiritual development among his followers. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Malik, can you go again? Malik? Oh, sorry, sorry. That's on mute. Oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not a tutorial video. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just follow up. Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji Maharaj, Ji Maharaj wished, wished for the youth to receive an education rooted in cultural values. He often expressed that since we have distanced ourselves from the knowledge of our past, we are facing numerous challenges in the present. In the knowledge of the past, he saw solutions to many challenges of today. For instance, regarding water crisis, he suggested various solutions inspired by India's ancient wisdom. He also believed that education should focus on skill de development and innovation. Acharyaji also worked significantly for the welfare of the prisoners in various jails. Many inmates, uh, many inmates received voca vocational training on handlooms with his, with his assistance. The respect he garnered among the prisoners was such that several released inmates would visit Acharyaji before meeting their own families. Okay. Uh, Samyak, can you go next? Not you. The other Samyak in the class. Okay. This one, qualities. Qualities like honesty, integrity, and self-reliance were integral to Acharya Ji's beliefs. He believed that building a strong nation rests on the foundation of citizens' sense of duty towards family, society, and the country. He constantly emphasized virtues like truthfulness and self-reliance. He consistently. Uh, consistently emphasized virtues like truthfulness and self-reliance. Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji will always remain alive in the hearts and minds of the citizens. His messages will continue to inspire and illuminate. While honoring his unforgettable memory, we are committed to embodying his values in tangible actions. This will not only be a humble tribute, but also a way to advance the path of a na national well-being following his teachings. Narendra Modi. Okay. So now you know, right? I hope you were curious who wrote this uh, this essay, this article. This is actually, this is actually a translation of a of a article that was published in one of the national dailies narendra modi out of his busy schedule the prime minister of india the greatest honor right uh, you one can get you know the most popular prime minister of india not just a prime minister of india the most popular one of india 
was actually inspired in his life and conduct by by acharya shri and he took his time out to actually write multiple articles that were per- published a few days ago in all of the national dailies across languages right from hindi english tamil telugu kannad marathi bengali assamese all the languages all the major languages of <laughs> india now why would a prime minister do such a thing unless they are really inspired of the greatness of acharya vidyasagar ji he was so moved that when he went out in the national convention of his party the largest party in the 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 party that's running uh, that's in the in in power in india the bjp bharatiya janata party he was so moved that when one leader after the other were giving their uh, homage to acharya vidyasagar ji when modi ji's turn came he actually had tears in his eye and he had to put lot of control apply lot of control to to stop his emotions to you know in in such a public forum so he had to take a long pause to to bring himself in order uh, you know while he was paying his obeisance and homage to acharya vidyasagar ji and the reason why he was so moved is because of the idealism and tap and tyag of acharya vidyasagar ji which goes beyond just being a digambar jain monk it's about his his compassion his uh, empathy his uh, organizing ability over you know motivating so many individuals to to come up with greater ideas for the upliftment of the poors of people who are always in crime so that they can get a better respectable life right so there are so many things acharya vidyasagar ji did i'm sure your parents must be talking about his uh, his contributions to jain jainism all through the day and night i am doing that right and molik i i know you would, must have already heard about acharya vidyasagar ji and this this essay this article that um, narendra modi ji wrote but i let you speak what's your point go ahead oh i was just asking a question Was Go he ahead. the 108th Maharaji, or is that because like 108 is a number? <coughs> why, why 108? Yeah. Okay. Oh, is it? Uh, I don't. Is he the 108th Maharaji, or is it like because of Namokar Mantra we say 108 times? Like no, Bita, because 108 has a very high spiritual significance in Indian Indian culture. And they just write it. So one hundred and eight is a mark of respect. So what we are saying is, Shri. When we say Shri, what is Shri? It's a salutation, right? Like yeah. when I, if you take my name in Hindi, you'll say Shri Gaurav Jain, right? So it's a mark of respect. You show you. It's a salutation, like Mister, Mrs., whatever, whatever. So we for men we use Shri, and for women either we use Sushri or we use Shri Mati, depending on whether they are married or unmarried. now when you put a shri with for somebody it's a mark of showing some kind of respect to them right you could call my name as hey gaurav but if you say dear mr gaurav or you say shri gaurav or shriman gaurav it's like a mark of respect correct Thank now you. what i am doing is for any acharya the general tradition is we always say you we say shri shri 108 that is 108 times shri laga raha hu main i am showing so much of respect it is 108 time more than a common human being or a person of respect in in our common culture right that yeah. many times i am putting shri in front of your name because you are so inspiring to me and you are so respectable to me like 108 times more similarly for bhagwan ji we say 1008 That is one thousand and eight, right? So we say ek hazar art Rishab Dev Bhagwan, or we say Shri. Uh, not we do never say Shri, but just in that sense, right? Ek hazar art uh, uh, Mahavir Bhagwan, likewise, है ना? So it's just a mark of respect. Now other spiritual significance of hundred and eight and hundred and one thousand and eight is this is a cyclic number. 
This is always repetitive property. Nine, right? One and eight adds up to nine. You know what is the beauty of number nine, right? If you multiply something with nine and add the digits out of it, it will again become nine and so and so forth, right? So, so in generally in Indian culture, nine as a number has a very high significance uh, of a spiritual order. It, it, it's, it's associated with many spiritual concepts, a chapter on its own for another day, but that's what the significance is. Okay? So now you remember why do we say 108 Shri 108 Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji? Or why do we say Shri 108 Praman Sagar Ji? It's a mark of our respect. We are showing so much of obeisance for our Acharya order, for our monk order. Likewise, for Arika Mataji, we say 105 because they are they are they are just a few levels below uh, in their um, in their in the monk order below Acharya and Muni. Okay, okay. So good, good question. I think I answered it. And you know, this is a very good thing that we as a Jain should take pride in that the Prime Minister, the most popular Prime Minister of India, is so much inspired by Acharya Ji's reading. And not just that, we should make an honest attempt as a youth, right? Because that's what he's addressing to the youth, right? And you all are youth, budding youths, right? You all should take some time and curiosity out of your, uh, your common pattern to devote and to find more facts about Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji. And you will be mesmerized with his contributions. The type of institutions he has set up while being a naked Digambar saint, right? The type of energies that he has uh, organized yes. around several ideas, that's worth an appreciation and following. Hello? So we, we all look around TED Talks and this talk and that talk. Here is one person whose life is 108 times more than a TED Talk. Or hundred and uh, thousand and eight times more than a tech talk. It's so much inspiring. The life itself. There are people who just do random talks, but their life is completely opposite of what they talk about. Here is a saint of our order, right? Of Jain, of the Gamba Jain tradition, who is taking forward those values, being very, very particular about his tyag and tap and uh, you know uh, his core. Uh, the Gambar Charitra on one side, but at the same time has this immense feel, feeling of Darshan Vishuddhi, of empathy towards other beings who are always looked down upon, including jail inmates. He had set up these big handloom projects to train these jail, jail inmates that skill so that when they come out of their, uh, their, uh, their uh, you know, uh, term, they, they can live a very respectable life and basically while they are in jail, they can earn enough to pass it on to their poor families. And the, the, the only, only uh, uh, term for becoming part of that handloom program is that you should have um, given up uh, eating any kind of meat. You, you have taken a vow not to ever touch meat or or liquor and do subtuvesans. We'll talk. We'll we'll talk about subtuvesan in a bit here. Hey na? That's the, the power of a monk who, ha, with his life and examples, have inspired so many people. Hey na? So I would request all of you to today go go to Wikipedia, look for Acharya Vidya Sagar Ji, and try to read yourself. Do some swadhyay the self-reading that is being referred here in this article and find out yourself. Go to YouTube. There are so many videos about his projects, his, his most famous and most pet projects. Look for them and feel proud of the culture that we are born in. Right? It's a big, big, you are not like any other human beings. You are all Sanghi Panchendris. But like Vikyat was saying, not all Sanghi Panchendris apply their cognition in the right way. We have been blessed with such a great tradition where application of the right cognition is always encouraged. And not just encouraged in words, but also in, in, in thoughts and action. 
So be mindful of that and always feel proud of being born in a Digamba Jain family. Hana? Okay. So with that said, let me now take you to the video. First video of today, which is the video about... Let me first share it and then I will do the talking. So where is it? Yes. So the first video that we have today, so we have two. We have one on Kashai and the other one is on Saptivyasan. So what is Kashai? Who is going to tell me what is Kashai? What is Kashai? Okay. Not a question. I want answers. Who knows what is a Kashai? Okay, Molly, go ahead. Is it one of those things that there are like six of them? Three of them good too? No. Oh, wait, no, that's That's Lesha. That's sure. Lesha. But I, I, I appreciate your your awareness of Jain concepts. So that's worth appreciation, but you know, that's not the answer. Any other I, thought? I, I have a thought. Mm, okay, go ahead. So my thought is that so this is like some sort of karma. It is not karma on its own, but it's a it's a reaction, as I was saying. It is the reaction of human beings or of all beings when they are subjected to fruition of a karma. That's what kashai is. Hena? There are four types of kashais. How many types, Samyak? How many types of kashais are there? Four. Four. Okay. Now, who is... Any any guesses? Any guesses you want to take? There are four kashais. Four kashais. Prod, man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Even if you are reading, it's okay. <laughs> Krod, man, Maya. And what is the fourth Log. one? Lobha. Lobha, yeah. Lob. Lob. Okay. Krod, man, Maya, Lob. Perfect. So even if you are reading, that's okay, right? At least you know where to read. That's good enough for me. Okay. So Krod Man Maya Lob. Now what do what do these words mean? What is Krod? Anger. Anger, exactly. Anger, exactly. Krod is anger. Isn't it how we react to situations which are not in our favor? Right? So it's our reaction. To a situation or fruition of our karma. Hai na? Because of fruition of our karma, past karma, it may so happen that we may get subjected to a bad situation. Right? Like there happens an accident or, you know, uh, somebody falls or I get, uh, I do not get a pay raise at office or something else. Right? Somebody comes shouting on me. And one of the ways a soul or a, a, a being reacts to it is angry. They get angry. Now, their anger may manifest in many different ways, ranging from just being angry but not reacting, not, uh, not um, basically uh, expressing it outward to the extent of being very violent or for that matter, uh, not just violent with words, but actually doing something bad in that violence. Oh, that's all manifestation of anger. Correct? So the first kashai is, what is the first kashai? Krod. Konsi ye pehli kashai? Krod. Okay. Krod. What's the second kashai? Man. Who is going to tell me what is man? Man. Ego. Man is ego. Exactly. <laughs> now again, ego has various degrees, right? So my own self-respect is also a man, but it's on the positive side. It, it keeps me driven, my self-respect. But I could have abhiman, which is I may have too much of, of uh, you know, I, I feel too high of myself and I have too much of ego. If I get born in a very wealthy family, what would happen? Oh, I am a rich man. You see all the people. Right? That's, the, that's the thing that happens with most like uh like Elon Musk. He's very he has a big ego. You can say that. You can say that. Of right, like it's, yeah, it's like the most businessmen apparently have like a big ego. So there is and a very thin line. Huh, not always. I would not agree with it. You know, there are always great people who don't have that big of an ego. But always remember, beta, some people are, even have ego of being poor. 
So being a rich is not a bad thing. It's about being a rich and not being humble, being a rich and not being a feeling of empathy. That is where the problem is. Right? So always don't, don't try to associate bad things with a rich man, always. Because then your, your, your thought process will always be, always put you in bad situations. Yes, too much of money sometimes makes people very uh, blinded with their money because they think they can buy and get everything in life. They get too much carried away by it. There are more chances of it. But always remember that there are people who could very well become too egoist on their being poor. There are people. You will run into it as you get more experiences in life. So I leave it to your experiences for later. But always remember, it is not being wealthy or rich that is bad. What is bad is how you want to apply your good karmas. Do you want to use them to drive better causes? Being more empathetic to more causes? Uh, being mindful of your being rich and being thankful for that and then using that wealth to organize better agendas or you want to just use it to show off and and buy uh, unnecessary things and uh, you know just get indulged in bad things hai na? or just build a big ego hai na? so ye yahan par dhyan rakhna hai hamare dharm mein aisa nahi kaha hai ki Amir hona or being rich is a kashai. No. Krodh is a kashai. Maan is a kashai. Hena? Anger and ego are kashais. That, those are the things that we should mindfully control. We cannot eliminate them 100% as a layman, but we should always make a conscious attempt to save ourselves from them. Okay? So, do ho gai. Teesri kaun si hai? Which is the third one? Krodh Maan. What is the third one? Lob. Nain. Lob se pehle ek hai. Oh, Maya. Maya. What is Maya? Deceit. Deceit. Yes. Being deceitful. Now, or being lying, deceit... lying or keeping away the truth. Bilkul. I mean, see, dekho, ye sab deceit ke form hai na. Ab lie kyu karte ho? When you are lying, you are actually hiding the truth. You are being deceitful to another person. You are trying to you know, uh, you, to, 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 to be, trick them, basically. Hai na? Trick them to get some th- benefit out of it. So that is what Maya is. Being very pompous, you may not have something and you are just claiming you have it in, in a wrong sense. Like, oh, I'm a wealthy man. You know, I have too many cars in my parking, in my parking lot, in my garage. Actually, my garage is very small. And I'm claiming I have 200 cars. That's being deceitful. Sometimes people even deceit being are very deceitful about their being poor. Oh, I'm very poor, you know, because they want to get some, some, some advantage. So they claim that and then they basically use it to their things. There are people that are just deceitful in their, uh, you know, um, their uh, day-to-day conduct, like lying to mom, lying to dad. I didn't watch any any TV. I didn't play any video games. But in reality, you are doing all that. That's also Maya. Hai na? So it's all about degrees. Right? So, ye bhi kashai hai. Agar aap aisi kashai karoge, aisa reaction karoge. So, let's say you are in a very good situation or bad situation and you react with krodh, maan, maya or lob. What kind of karma will come to you next time? Or what kind of karma are you attracting in the process? You are attracting more and more bad karmas. So those bad karmas may not always impact you right away. But they are getting attached to your soul. And at some point, they will come to fruition, giving you bad situations. So you may think, ah, aaj baj gaya. Maine jhoot bol diya and I have saved myself. Right? Uh, or, you know, I did my anger and I warded off that particular situation. But later on, you may have to bear fruits of it, right? You may not have, get it right away. You may, like there are situations, right? Somebody kills so many animal and then they j- just go scot-free. Later on, their karma catches up to them. When the karma, that karma that you accrued 
while you did that killing comes to fruition, that's when you suffer. Hai na? So always be mindful of that. So that's third karma, uh, sorry, third kashaya, which is low, uh, krodh man, maya, which is deceitfulness. The fourth kashaya, what is the fourth kashaya? Uh, lobe. Lobe. Lobe kya hota hai? Greediness. Greediness, right? Now greediness could be, hey, I want this somehow. And it all drives everything. Always in our tradition, we say, Greed or lobe is the uh, is the reason for all the other kashayas. Kaise? Mujhe lobe hua hai na? Mujhe ye wala iPhone chahiye. Ab mere paas paise to hai nahi. To main kya karunga? Let me see if I can trick this guy to get this iPhone. So I'll go and say, hey, can I buy this iPhone? I have. I'll pay with my credit card. And I don't even have a credit card. So first thing, I I I'm trying to trick him down. I am trying to be deceitful. Or I say, I'll pay the money later, whatever, right? That's being deceitful. Next, I don't have the, uh, you know, um, uh, the the the, uh, the credit card. So I may end up stealing somebody's credit card and use it claiming it is me. That's also being deceitful. Why do I need uh, that kind of iPhone? Because I want to satisfy my ego. All the rich people I have seen have an iPhone the latest one, so I want one, right? So I want to, I'm stoking the fire. I want my ego to be satisfied because I think if I have a big iPhone, you know, it makes me look good. It makes me look rich. It, it stokes my ego, right? Let's say the guy uh, reacts to it and say, no, no, shoo away. You know, you don't have any real money. Don't come here. I'm not give, going to give you your an iPhone. I think you are very poor. You don't have the right kind of money. So run away. So he hurt my ego. When they hurt my ego, what's the next thing I'll do? I may express my anger. Right? I may speak loudly or may, may rough him up or try to fight him and then maybe ultimately run away with the iPhone. Right? That's what happens. That's why these situations always your urge and, and your... Uh, your wants are what you, what drives all these kashayas. They are all related. Sometimes it happens that I want to best marks in the exam. It's a good thing. Work hard for it. Work hard for it. Right? Uh, solve more examination papers. Uh, you know, burn some midnight oil. You know, do revisions multiple times. What not? Do self-study. Work with group study. What not? So many tools. Instead, what I decide to do is I I didn't prepare for the exam. Uh, so let me cheat. What what has driven what has driven you know me to cheat? Because I want want is the expression of greed, isn't it? I want good grades and I couldn't work hard, so let me cheat. Things, 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 good, the good things come for those who work. Who work, not just work, who work hard and harder. There and should no? be a saying, good things come to those who work hard. Correct. There should be a saying. There is a saying. You're, you're very intelligent. <laughs> good. Okay. So with that said, let me now run the video. And let's. I will let you go through it. And then we'll go forward. Jai Janendra. Today we will share the secret of being super happy. Do you know why we feel sad? There are enemies hidden in ourselves who makes us sad. These enemies are called Kashai. Do you know the four types of Kashai? They are Krodh meaning anger, Man meaning ego, Maya meaning cheating and Lobh meaning greed. Oh, I have never heard these words before. Okay, so let's know more about these enemies and how to get rid of them too. So how many types of kashayas are present in us? Let's find out. Once there were two friends, Ankit and Rahul. They would always play together, go to school together, study together and would always stay together. 
one day rahul went to ankit's place and while playing he broke ankit's favorite toy by mistake ankit got very angry and he cried a lot he didn't think for once that rahul broke the toy by mistake you know which enemy or kashai dominated him yes it was krodh kashai meaning anger whenever ankit and rahul played any game together ankit always demanded to take the first turn he always wanted to sit on the front seat of the scooter he always thought of himself to be right and better than anyone else he wanted everyone to agree with him so tell me which kashai is this yes this is man kashai meaning ego because of man kashai ankit even forgot that rahul is his dear friend and he should give him a chance too see how man kashai meaning ego troubles us one day ankit's father bought a chocolate each for ankit and rahul he told ankit to take one and give another one to his friend rahul but you know what ankit did he didn't even tell rahul about the chocolate and he ate both the chocolates alone so tell me what ankit did was right or wrong yes it was very wrong because he cheated upon his friend he did maya chari meaning cheating he was not satisfied with one chocolate and he got greedy he suffered from lobe kashai and has wanted both the chocolates for himself so did you see what lobe kashai made ankit do it made him do maya chari that is cheating so these four bad enemies are called kashais these kashai always work in the following way at first one of them enters inside us and then they invite rest of their friends to they come into us and then turn into us into a bad person just like ankit got greedy for chocolates first and then greed prompted him to cheat that is maya chari whenever we consider ourselves to be the best and someone disagrees with us we suffer from man kashai then man kashai invites its friend krodh kashai man kashai says that if someone disagrees with you then get angry so we do man kashai and anger also comes on its own so now onwards whenever we get angry what we should do we should sit quietly for a few minutes and realize that anger growth is a kashai one of the bad enemy and we should keep it away from ourselves no matter what the situation is we should never think of think of ourselves to be the best or always right we should not insist on people to agree with us instead we should respect other people's way of thinking and always say no entry to man kashai we should never cheat on anyone we should never steal anything nor hide things even if our man forces us to do so we should remember that man kashai is entering into us and we should always stay away from it we should be extremely careful we should never be greedy and always be thankful for whatever we have got for the good health loving family such caring friends and so many toys that we have got so now we shall slowly get rid of all the kashai enemies we should stay away from being angry or in krodh and always stay away from man meaning ego and stay away from maya chari that is cheating we will never let greed overcome us and we will try to become a pure soul won't we jai janendra okay make sense samyak same concept right with a very simplified story of kids there is one more thing i would tell most of the time your growth your anger is also because of your man hai na kya hota hai wo chhota bachcha hota hai na they also have a very small babies they also have ego everyone has ego you know if let's say that little baby has a small thing you know 
a small Lego with them and you snatch it away, right? Or you shoo him away, shoo, shoo. What happens? Even the baby reacts to it. The baby reacts with some anger. They, they'll get agitated. They'll start, their expression of anger would be different. Some babies start, will start hitting you. Some babies will start crying you. But ultimately, why is that happening? Because they are feeling a bit cheated or, you know, their ego, you have just hurt their ego. Correct? And that leads to the expression of anger. That happens with all of us, between brother and sisters too, between siblings too, right? You have a sibling, you know, and they enter your, their, your space and maybe just shoo you away if you are like, let's say, the younger one. What happens? You react. You react in a bad way. You, you become angry. You know, there is, this is called as chain reaction. It's all connected. It's all connected. And the thing is, when you react to a situation in a bad way, you get trapped in it. If you control your emotions, you control the expression of these kashayas in some shape or form, then you are going to stay sane. You are going to stay happy. If you are not able to con control them, what would happen is you will have a burst of emotion and that would lead to more damage. Either to yourself or to your, your, your uh, you know, um, loved ones. Correct? So that is what happens. It's a cyclic thing. And we should be mindful of that. Sometimes I, I, I put my kids in that situation. I ask them, okay, you just reacted. You heard this other, your sibling, uh, you know, uh, why did you do that? What kind of kashai it is? That's your first start. Ask yourself, whenever something happens, which you are, a bit guilty about when you have that small speckle of guilt in you, try to assess. Hmm, what did I just do? I spoke loudly back to my mom. What was it? Oh, it's anger. It's crowd. Now, why was I crowd? Why was I angry? Because my mom was nagging me about doing something or uh, reprimanding me for not doing something and so on and so forth. What did that just do? Oh, it hurt my man, my ego, right? I have this ego. I'm carrying this ego as a teenager or not a teenager. And suddenly when my parents tell me something, I react to it. I react to it in a very uh, bad way, like, you know, burst of emotion. Oh, you, you always keep telling me this. You know, I do the things at the right time. I put my socks at right place. You know, I, I, I turn off lights of my room whenever I'm leaving. Don't do this to me. What has just happened? Right? Your ego got hurt. But in that process, you are also being mayachari. You are being deceitful because not always you turn off your room's light. At least there is one episode where you have not done it. Anna? So you can change your statements there and be more control of your emotions. You could talk peacefully, right? Why to raise your voice when you can raise your words? There is a saying, raise your words, not your voice. And you will always be out of trouble. Why do people get in trouble? In India, movies may be as a There's this guy, good guy, you know, there's this bad guy, you know, the bad guy is a big ego guy. The good guy goes to him and somehow hurts his ego. So both guys were doing their things in their own space and suddenly they cross path and there happened something that this good guy hurt the ego, good guy hurt the ego of the bad guy. And it leads to a chain reaction of violence, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Every time this such kind of violence, they don't lead to something good. They lead to a lot of damage. They lead to a lot of broken hearts, broken families and whatnot. And we should be mindful of it. You know, people about guns in this country, everyone talks about guns, right? So there is this guy carrying a gun. Why is he carrying gun? Because it's a mark of his, his power, his ego, right? And then there comes this another guy. Somehow he hurts this guy's ego. What happens next? You know, he has the gun. Now he wants to show off the gun. The only way to show off the gun is by pulling a trigger. So he does that. It causes violence, isn't it? Right? That's what you have to be mindful of. 
And when you are mindful of those things, you would save yourself out of such situations at high school, at middle school, wherever you are, right? Bullies, right? There are these kids you face every time in your, your life as a teenager. How do you save yourself from those? If you are aware, oh, this guy has a big ego. If I hurt his ego, he'll get, you know, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll make trouble. He'll cause trouble. Let me avoid that. Not always you have to confront them. Sometimes avoiding them altogether is a great idea, right? Because it's not a mark of being timid. It's a mark of intelligence. It's about mark of you being a Sanghi Panchendri. Certain situations you should confront. Certain situations you should avoid. Move away. But when will you move away? If you also build a big ego around him, no, no, I will fight back from him. You are a small boy. That guy has a gun. Or a, or, or a knife, how would you fight back with that guy? Why would you fight back with that guy? Right? Move away from those situations. Make good company. You are known by great company that you keep. Right? Just that, that could be your expression of your learning abilities, your cognitive abilities. Correct? So be mindful of these things. Bring them in your experiences, in your, in your way of thinking. How do you do, do that? By taking a pause. Before you react, you contemplate. Oh, what just happened? Oh, yeah. This guy is coming. He's trying to, you know, anger me. I should not get angry. He's actually trying. He's playing games with me, mind games. Let me be mindful of them. Let me take a step back. Let me move away. Let me focus my energies in a positive way and run away. So what? Fine. Great. You don't have to bring your anger to the front all the time. Channelize them. You know? Because if you channelize them in the right direction, they will bring you lots of, of great karma. If you channelize them towards wrong situation, you will end up with <laughs> bad eventualities. Make sense? Make sense, Aviral? Okay. So next thing, which is kind of related about what is bad, uh, you know, we are talk going to talk about seven things, Sapt Vyasan. It's a small video. Okay. There are Sapt Vyasans as per Jainism. Oh, my, my own hand is raised, looks like. Let me bring down my hand. Where is my hand? Okay. That's fine. Mm, lower hand. Okay. Good. Huh. So, Sapt Vyasan, kisi ko pata hai, Saat Vyasan kaun se hote hai? Saat, seven Vyasans. These hey. are seven indulgences or seven bad habits. Thik hai, Malik, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say seven addictions. Seven addictions, yes. Do you know the names? Well, there's one about, I don't know all of them. There's one about me, there's one about gambling, there's mm -hmm. one about like bad drinking. Jua. There's one about yeah. Yes. There's one so you covered three. So you covered C. I'll say Jua, which is gambling, right? You covered meat eating, which is mans, right? Yeah. You covered alcoholism or madhya, but it's not just alcoholism, but any kind of intoxicant that makes you yeah, bad drinking. a habitual, right? So anything, right? Smoking, tobacco, blah, 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 right? So these three things, math and people now try so many bad things, right? Cannabis. I'm not the first one telling you what they are, right? You are teenagers, you are in school, you would have heard about those things. All the bad things. I mean, some people make a joke about it, but I mean, it's not bad as the real thing. It's doing the real thing. Yes. So these are bad habits. Okay. So three you covered, right? Jua, Mans, Madhya. What is one more? Jute lying. Chori, Jute. Yes. Yeah. With they are one or they are one each? They are one each. Jute and lying, uh, jute and chori are different. Oh, they are different. <coughs> they are. Different. Yeah. Then there's one more hinsa. Um. Yeah, which is kind of um. You know. Yeah. Uh, um. Shikar jo karte na akhet ya. Yeah. There is that's one too. What else? <coughs> Sorry. Then there's one about relationships. I think. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. So there is one about relationship. There is one about adultery. There are two about relationships and you are all teenagers. So you know about them, right? One is people visit these uh, prostitutes, which are people who, who uh, get a, you know, want relationship by and they pay for those relationships. That's visiting prostitutes. And the last one is adultery, which is about having illicit relationships uh, beyond your married partner. That is adultery, right? So having such relationship is also a vyasan, right? So let's watch this video. Uh, it talks about the first four in great detail because those are something that small kids can understand. And other two are more relevant for grown-ups, for teenagers and beyond, uh, you know, to be mindful of, okay? And these are seven bad habits. You should be aware of them and you should take a niyam, a vow, not to ever do it in your life. As a Jain, avoiding refraining from subtivation is, is, is very important. You know? So before you can take a vow, you should be aware of what is wrong and right. Correct? Then only you can apply your uh, learning abilities, your being Sanghi Panchenri. If you don't even know what is wrong and right, how would you differentiate and take a vow not doing the wrong things? Right? But what, so, if, what if you have to lie you like, let's say somebody is dressing bad, but just to make them feel good, you say it's looking good. Does that okay, count? So as always well? apply your. And, so, and also, if they have a gun, like if they like they shoot you, if they, if, they, if you not insult them. Hmm. No, ma'am. Good point. Good point. Very good point. Lying, which hurts somebody or causes a loss to somebody, is something we should refrain from. As a layman, as a layman. A lying to save somebody's uh, life or to save yourself from such kind of trouble, like somebody has a gun, you know, or to, to pamper somebody who you empathize with is okay, provided it's not hurting them. If it ultimately hurts them, then it is better to avoid such lying. Okay. Anyways, lying is not called out as a, as a vessel, although it is called out as a paap. Right? Paanch paapo mein to hota hai. To usko avoid to karna chahiye. Sab tu yasan mein, uh, somehow it is not talked about, ex, uh, you know, uh, exactly. It's kind of chori se related ho jata hai thoda. Thik hai na? So, Molly, going back to your earlier question. Aise, uh, alag se nahi hai. Thik hai? So, anyways, let's watch this video. Chai Chirendra kids. Today, we will talk about some things which people do for fun, money or entertainment. While people may enjoy doing such things for the first time, they may soon become addicted to it without realization. And when it becomes a habit, they forget what's good and what's bad for them. For example, it's so much fun to watch TV and playing games on the mobile. But do you know that watching too much TV and playing games on the mobile for long hours may result in it turning into a habit? And slowly your eyes start becoming weak, but still we like to play. Similarly, there are some actions which can spoil our life. Let me tell you about such actions. The first one is gambling. Any such game which involves using money or placing a bet to decide a winner is known as gambling. For example, playing lotto or raffle. Some people play cards or housey by betting on money. Even th So a quick question. Going to Vegas and playing uh, in casino, what is it? Gambling. It is gambling. Okay. Gambling, uh, but like, and also like, there's so many jokes around. In in the parts I I'm in, and there are like so many jokes about it. I have to give. A yeah, because about everyone it. is doing it around you, and it is the thing of the the country of this country at least doesn't make it right. Think I mean, it's like like here it's like a like in my in my particular part it's like a it's apparently it's like a big joke. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So be mindful of that, Hannah. Being, being being popular 
or populist doesn't make it right. It is still gambling. Putting money on race course, on racing horses, is the is is a mark of of luxury in this in everywhere in the world, right? It's like oh, I'm a rich man. I put my money on horses. I put money on teams. I do betting on on teams. You know, NPL and NHL teams. But That's the reality also, is, it's all betting. It's all gambling. And you know? all kind of betting is gambling. And we should be mindfully avoiding it, and uh, actually taking a wow against it. Okay. What if it's like you win it, you win a thing, and then you spin a wheel, and all the, uh, and if you say you pay an entry fee to go in a tournament, some sort of tournament, you win the tournament, and you spin a wheel, and that wheel determines the, well, how much prize you get, but the, but the, the 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 wheel has money, all the money more than the entry fee. Is that still called gambling? Uh, but it depends, right? I mean, uh, there are people who would term it as also a form of gambling because it can make you habitual to it. Right, but more important thing for you to understand is uh, the thing that you are doing. Is it driving your one of your kashais? If it is driving your kashai and it is making you addicted to it, that that thing, then it is a subtraction and it should be avoided. Okay, uh, Malik, what's your question? I'm just wondering. I have played poker a few times, but I haven't used actual money. It's just like. Just That's, a card game without using actual money. Is that okay? Uh, it's kind of okay. But just be mindful that you should not end up getting too much tied to it that one day you start putting money in, in the real poker. Yeah, well, I that's, that's That's what happens, right? When you start, uh, there are kids, you know, who, who play with uh, guns. Like toy guns, toy guns. They start with toy guns and one day they start, you know, using real guns it also is is one of the proven thing you know so be mindful of that most important thing is habit bad habits because once you get uh, habit. once you get these habits they they can lead you to more uh, more uh, bad things uh, you know when kashais generation of kashais basically that's very important to understand and uh, uh, there is there is there is a uh, how to put it? Uh, there is a very thin line you know, uh, between certain things which are popular, populist, and uh, a subtuition. And you should be mindful, especially in this country and especially your age. Because I'll tell you one thing. The age when you get lifelong addictions is the age of teenage. Most of my friends who got into smoking, they got into it when they were in the first year of their college. And most of them got the smoking habit because somebody somehow convinced them that it clears up your mind and smoking can help you score better in examinations. That, that, that's not, that's like, that's like, that's, that's a farce. You, it, it can do that because that's exactly what drugs do to your uh, mind. It plays with your mind. Anna, you may get this feeling of clear uh, thought and whatever, whatever. But what is the cost? You know, what is the price you are paying for it? You have just got addicted to something. Now, anything and everything that you do in life, even attending a presentation at work, 20 years down your college, you cannot do it without a, a puff of smoke. People get so tied with it now. They cannot live without it. They can't, can't even go to potty in the morning without smoking a puff. They have got, to that, that, they have got to that level. You know? So be mindful. At your age, it is very important for you to apply that discretion. You know? For the next two hours. But is it worth it? I'm going to pay a price for it through my life. Right? That is what mindfulness is about. Don't get too carried away by some people have this power of convincing. They can convince you for anything and everything in life. You have to apply your discretion. You are also a Sanghi Panchendri, like they are. Like they have power of convincing, you also have power of persuasion. Yeah, na? So always use that to your advantage, not to their advantage. Make sense? 
Okay, let's keep going. This is called gambling. Playing these games gradually become an addiction. In order to earn easy money, few people play these games again and again, and sometimes they end up losing everything. Hence, we should always earn money through hard work. We should never do gambling. The second one is eating non-vegetarian food. Is it good thing to hurt, kill, and eat a living being just to satiate your taste buds? We should always have sympathy and compassion for all living beings. By eating non-vegetarian food, we become responsible for killing living beings, which is a grave sin, since it's an act of violence, which means hinsa. It is bad for our health too. That's why we should never eat dead animal body or any other non-vegetarian food. The third is drinking alcohol or liquor. Do you know the process of making alcohol? Many kinds of fruits like grapes and other grains like wheat and jaggery are allowed to rot for many days. This results in the birth of tras jeev meaning many minute multi-sensed living beings in it and that fermented liquid turns into alcohol when we consume alcohol all these minute living beings die resulting in us committing sin through hinsa meaning violence we also lose control over our thoughts and actions when we consume alcohol people start behaving very weirdly after consuming alcohol and alcohol badly affects our liver and nervous system too consumption of alcohol kills us slowly hence we should always stay away from alcohol the fourth thing that we should stay away from is stealing shyly picking up something or taking someone's things without asking them is known as stealing taking away someone's forgotten belonging is also stealing okay tell me while walking on the road if you find and take away a toy that someone has left behind or forgotten will that be accounted for stealing yes that's stealing too because it does not belong to you right even in school if you take away someone's pencil eraser notebook without asking them is also stealing no one likes people who steal and no one becomes friends with someone who steals and always remember you should be mindful of not even stealing ideas right like there are people who write these books and they don't give enough uh, credit to the original writer that's called as plagiarism plagiarism Right? but it's right? illegal so i mean it's illegal okay. it's illegal so, so it's illegal or not doesn't matter it's as per our religion it is stealing so you should always give credit to the writers the original writers but and if, what if it's like they, say say it's, i have a question go ahead beta so say it's like you 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 you're not like exactly taking it you somebody the somebody person gives you the idea and you give them the respect so that's not considered stealing right exactly if you give well, them respect and if you tell them hey i'm going to use your idea right so people do that at work all the time they take somebody else's idea without giving them credit that's a type of stealing it it may be soft stealing you may inadvertently do it but if you are doing it with design by design hey this idea is so good let me steal it away and i'll present it to uh, to the boss before this guy gets an opportunity right that also is stealing theek hai so be mindful of these in the new world you may not get a situation where there is a ball on the road and you will have the urge to get that ball but in this new world you will always have an urge to steal somebody's idea and let's say you go and patent it right so we have to contextualize it also you will never have this situation in life where you know somebody has lost his ball in the you know, garden and you will steal you have passed that age 
right? You will rather ask your parents and they will buy you the best of the ball. You don't have to steal it away, correct? But where you are more prone or susceptible to situations where there is this great friend of yours who has come up with a very innovative idea for his project or her project and you end up stealing it and using it and calling it as your own without their uh, their uh, trust and without their consent that's stealing you should be more mindful of that because that's what will hurt you not like a ball lying on the road hai na theek hai let's keep going what if it's like it's stealing I have a question. is also we'll unseen. come back to it the fifth one is hunting some people go to the forest or jungle to hunt animals and birds like deer lion tiger birds etc just for fun you must have noticed some people go fishing also but isn't it wrong to hurt other living beings for the sake of entertainment that's why we should never hunt other living beings there are some addictions that ruin our relations with our family too right so this is these relationship that ruin your family and break their trust are two adultery and prostitution and you should be avoiding those hai na now very important for you to understand this you all are kids you all are impressionable age you all have a burst of hormones that will start soon you will reach your puberty right At least some you, of us some of us yes so what would happen is because of those burst of hormones you will soon get attracted towards opposite sex but you have to be mindful as a jane it's very important to choose your partner right and more importantly at the right age with full consent of your parents if you get in such relationship they are always long lasting and we will be good for your posterity for your future generations there are situations where people get into these uh, you know relationship just because they are in teenagers and then they have to pay through their life in this country majority of such marriages break you know before even they are 30 and they have burden of uh, of uh, infamy and they have more importantly burden of lot of uh, you know personal heartbreak and emotions that they have to then carry through the life forget about the financial losses that it can lead to so you have to be very mindful choose your partner right remember this if you don't choose a jane partner what's going to happen is accept it as a fact there will be no jane religion that will continue in your your family it's very hard very very hard in families where in marriages where the other one of the partner is not jane it's very hard to continue with your 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 way of thinking because our way of thinking is very refined i will not say it is hard it is very refined it is very elitist it's not a thing for everyone to follow it takes lot of courage and lot of tap and tyag and sanyam lot of self restraint to be a jain you know you have to be very mindful of that so that's why it is very important that when these hormones are you know uh, bubbling up you apply your discretion you apply a pause you break it down your focus now should be on good studies building a career getting good education getting uh, known to the jain concepts so that we can apply them we can live a very good life going forward not just that we can live a good life but get these sanskars so that you can pass it down always be mindful of that think like a leader don't think like are mujhe jain banna hai isliye main jain banu think i have to become a jain so i can pass it down to generations that's how a leader think hai na a leader kya sochta hai mere paas bhi jainism hai और मैं उसको अपनी जनरेशन को पहुंचा भी रहा हूं वेन यू आर अटेंडिंग दिस कॉल थिंक दैट वन डे यू विल बी सिटिंग एट अंकल्स प्लेस एंड यू विल बी गिविंग यू नो टेकिंग द प्रमाणिक पाठशाला यू हैव टू बी 
कमिंग इन टू दिस पाठशाला विद दैट माइंड सेट इसी तरह से वेन यू आर गेटिंग इन टू दीज थिंग्स अवे बी अवेयर ऑफ सब सब वेसन्स एंड नॉट जस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ देम इंश्योर दैट यू आर नॉट डूइंग इट एंड यू आर नॉट डूइंग इट बाय कन्वेक्शन सो दैट वेन द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन कम्स टू यू इट इज वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू पास इट डाउन विथ विथ योर ओन एग्जाम्पल दैट्स हे आई डेन डू इट एंड आई एम फाइन आई एम स्टिल वेरी गुड आई हैव अ ग्रेट करियर I made good of myself, right? That is what your thought process should be. इसीलिए ना ये जो things है ना they break your relationships. Going to prostitute, being in adultery, having girlfriend, boyfriend. These are all distractions. You don't need those distractions. People around you may be doing it. They may even be successful while doing it. That's okay. That's our differentiator. We don't have to 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 fall to these. uh seven habits to build a good a, a good uh reputation for ourselves we can do it in despite of them we don't need these tools make sense so be mindful and next time when you go to temple think about these subtuasans and try to to build a will power in you to take a vow a vow for life not to get indulged in any of these sevens that is the most important thing make sense aviral okay cool so i think this 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 uh, this video was good enough i think we have way past our time today but this was very interesting topic for your age so i wanted to give it due justice hai na we couldn't cover the uh, the uh, kahoot but that's okay that's for kids you are you are grown up kids i can talk more with you है ना? ओके। यस बेटा। बेटा। हैव सम काइंड ऑफ मेडिसिन विद एल्कोहल देर इज ऑलवेज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव टू इट विच इज इक्वली अवेलेबल सेम थिंग अप्लाइज टू वीगन मेडिसिन और वीगन सप्लीमेंट्स like whenever we go for such medicines we always go for something which does not have alcohol or honey you will always find them you will always find vegan alternates for supplements b12 not b12 b6 b whatever right d you will find them it's just a matter of using your cognition and your research to get to them there are alternatives for nyquil which do not have alcohol now having said that there are some life saving drugs at times you ha- have to subject yourself to them at that point what you should do as a layman first is of course try to avoid them as much as possible certain times it's not possible you can let your doctor know hey i have these allergies i don't want to take them blah blah right build a case for it other times one thing at least you can do is if let's say you get subjected like i'll give you an example my wife has a had a uh, broken arm like she broke both of her bones while biking right so both her arm bones ulna and radii broke when you go through such kind of painful situation uh, the doctors prescribe you uh, opioids the medicine which is made up of opium now opium is a plant product it's a plant so it's not animal derived which is one good thing about it however it is habit causing if you take it continuously for a longer period of time it can make you habitual to it it's an in, it could become an intoxicant right because it has those uh, properties of playing with your brain but at that time in trauma at times you need those things to better manage your pain you 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 may not even know that you have been given those medicines but always in such situations you should be mindful of them and at the first opportunity if you can build that courage and strength to manage your pain yourself then give it up like when my wife got through it i think within 5 days she gave it up she said no i don't want to take it anymore i'm not taking it anyways more than one pill a day and i don't even need that that doesn't mean that she didn't have to go through a lot of pain she still had to manage it but she gave it up 
है ना सो थिंग्स ऑफ दैट यू शुड अप्लाई ना ओवर द काउंटर ड्रग्स लाइक नाइक्विल यूल ऑलवेज फाइंड एन ऑल्टरनेटिव देर आर आयुर्वेदिक ड्रग्स विच इज वॉट कैन हेल्प यू कंट्रोल यूर माई थियोरी ऑन नाइक्विल इज इट एनी वेज डजेंट वर्क फार्स है ना इट इट मेक्स यू स्लीप सो बेटर इज यू टेक सम काड़ा और टेक सम यू नो दो टीज लाइक वो कौन सा टी आता है ना हर्बल टीज राइट टेक सम हल्दी एंड दूध एंड यू विल बी बेटर इट विल बिल्ड योर इनर स्ट्रेंथ टू फाइट बैक टू दिस टेक सम जिंजर एट मैक्स आई नो जिंजर इज ऑल्सो लाइक ए नॉन जेन थिंग बिकॉज इट्स ए रूट बट दैट्स बेटर देन गोइंग एन गोइंग फॉर अ सब टू एसन मेक सेंस like once in a life i had to take nyquil and that was the only time i took it because i felt so bad in my night like i was whoosh, i had never taken an intoxicant now if you suddenly supply yourself with a nyquil i'm like i was dodging off and i i didn't feel right the, that night was so difficult for me and i didn't take it ever hai na yeah okay Good. my Any mom other? gives me seetho palati churn instead of nyquil and take okay one. that's a good one right that's a good one samya that's a ni- nice one to have right i take dood and haldi all the time my kids take hal dood and haldi like this is allergy season this is the time that perhaps we get to lot of dood and haldi because that builds in the inner strength hai na nyquil is a farce people think it works it never works it just makes you sleep you know vikya what's your question and, and i Like it's like, and I used to drink hal do then haldi then normal do with sugar then then like do with honey and then a normal do. Now we're drinking like do. Honey is a no no. We can't. Honey is a no no for Jains. Why? Uh, I'll tell you another day. Ask your mom. Why should we not eat honey? Right. But but I, then why? But she, if she, if that was if it was that that was the case. Why did she give me like a dude with honey for multiple days in a row? That's why you should ask her. You should ask: Should Jane's be taking honey? Is sugar fine or no? Sugar is okay. Honey is you know why? Because honey is actually honey is made by honey honey bees, right? Yeah. Actually, you know how honey bees make honey? They uh-huh. drink the nectar and they poop out the honey. Pool, it's poop. Poop. So the squeeze out, and then they sleep in that honey, and then they give their eggs in that honey, and then they pee in that honey. They do everything in the honey. Now, would you like to have more honey? Yeah, full of poop, larva, pee. Well, it's not going to be full of larva. The larva is visible, so it's going to be removed before. I, you don't know about that, right? It's egg. Oh. It's eggs are there. They live in that the same yeah, honey. I mean, the poop that... is enough to scare anyone. The poop is enough to make anyone go away. Okay, good enough. Now, now you ask your mom why you should not not eat honey or eat honey. Wait, but doesn't it get fertilized? I mean, I'm not going to eat it anyway. I never eat it, but like, just asking. Beta, it's again the process, right? So they may clean it up, whatever, whatever, whatever. It really At tastes terrible. At some point, and then like, there is another thing. thing. There is another thing. You are stealing. the honey was produced by the bee for its own consumption for the consumption of its family right it was not made for vikhyat it was not it's not like milk like you know always the cow has surplus milk i mean that, that honey bee, i despise honey because it tastes terrible okay good good enough we'll not we'll not spend more time on it we are okay. half hour uh, uh, over our time okay guys okay. thank you जय जिन लेट्स डू जावानी जावानी के जान से सूझे लो कालो देवानी जोवानी मस्तक धरू सदा दे हे जिनवाणी भरती तो हे जपू दिन रैन जो तेरी शरणा गए सो पावे सुख चैन उत्तम क्षमा बेटा इफ आई हर्ट माय इफ यू आई हर्ट यू विथ एनी ऑफ माय माय वर्ड्स ओके उत्तम शमा एंड मिच्छा मी लुकर उत्तम शमा सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास जय जिनेन जय जिनेन बेटा जय जिनेन बाय बाय